Yo, what's up? It's your boy Up All Night Shit, man. We live at Revive Radio, 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. Every Monday through Friday. Keep that shit locked. Heavy. Let's get it started. Welcome to Revive. It's about that time. Welcome to Revive. It's about that time. <laughs> you know what time it is. Open up your ears. You know what time it is. Open up your mind. It's about that time. It's your girl POC. Hey! It's your girl POC. Hey! Yep, yep, to the yep, yep. You already know what time it is, man. It's your girl, POC, host of Revive Radio. We're live right now. Turn your radios up. Spread the word. Spread the message. Tell a friend to tell a friend. You already know how I'm coming each and every time we go live, man. We got a jam-packed show for you guys. This is a show you don't want to miss. I heard it's a special voice on the other side of this phone with me right now. I heard we got some amazing talent coming out the West Coast. What's good? I got my special guest, Amad, on the phone. How you feeling? Thank you. Thank you for having me like really really appreciate it. it's amen by the way so i definitely appreciate amen it. i bring something i apologize it's all good that's it's that all that, good. that's that east coast flair i apologize i apologize amen go ahead and introduce yourself and let the people know exactly who they listening to yes uh, how's it going vibe uh, my name is amen from san diego california nowhere else nothing that's <laughs> san diego is the best always for for their foremost from san diego um i make music uh, that's what I love to do. I have a great group of friends, family, and teams, and we're here to just just bring positivity and really do something dope. Uh, and and, for, and secondly, you know, first and foremost as well, you know, Black Lives Matter as well. Um, you know what I'm saying? We're here for <laughs> black women. We're here for, for all black people, black tra- tra- trans, black, black people that may be trans. All types of black people we're here for today. Um, cause I've been myself a, a victim of police, uh, uh, just being accused of just anything and everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, just even just when we, we, we did something amazing in New York last year, awesome. um, and it got tainted by the police accusing me of, uh, grand theft auto breaking entering so on and so forth. So, um, yeah, just wanted to say that, that I'm here for a message. I'm here for a cause. Um, I'm glad you even yeah, started. I'm yeah, glad. That's a little- I was just about to say, I'm glad you even started that way, um, because a lot of people shy away from that conversation. Not a lot of people right now, especially in, you know, using their artist, artistry platform to really speak about it. Why do you decide to use your platform to talk about it? Um, I, it's just something I always have done. Like, I, I grew up in a, a, a kind of white community-ish, kind of just around it. Uh, I, I didn't really hang out. I went to school in, uh, in the white community, but it was never something that grabbed me or like I always thought was I was always other places and I was in kind of just had two two feet in both both areas uh, mm-hmm. kind of like my whole life so shout out to moms for just making sure that I was in a in a community <laughs> that didn't didn't allow me to grow or, or see who, who I actually was as a person who let me grow uh, but yeah just I, I've seen stuff like this all my life um, so it was always like I grew up skateboarding so okay uh, being a skateboarder naturally I couldn't even interact with the cops because so I was like, oh, I'm black, and black people really don't. Like, I was doing NWA uh, growing up as a child, so I'm like, okay, cool. I noticed that, okay, my skin color and police, we don't really we don't really match up. We haven't had the best history. Like, mm-hmm. Rodney King riot was a whole, that was a whole thing. They burned down the city because of what they did to that man. Mm-hmm. So, um, my biggest thing was just like, I just see, there's just stuff i seen. So let me ask you this question. So let me ask you this question because, you know, the West Coast is definitely a place that's known for conscious music, you know, starting with Tupac. And then right now um, you have Kendrick Lamar really repping the conscious sound for the West Coast. You know, you know, how important do you think it is to make sure that people understand, you know, to apply knowledge into their music and make sure they're educating with their music? Um, So I think all forms of music are dope. I think everything is cool. Um, But I definitely think you need the conscious side. Only because you know, I think you need both sides. I think you need the party side because every it ain't all bad. Like That's it ain't well. all it, it ain't all it ain't all negative. It ain't you know 
But I think you also have to have the conscious side because you have to have people talking about something. And I think when you talk about something, you touch people's lives, you touch people's hearts. Mm -hmm. um, it shows that you care, and it's music that lasts longer. That's um, right. A lot of the part, a lot of the party music and stuff is so fun, it's so dope. But some of that stuff you can't even turn on no more. Mm -hmm. You turn some of that stuff on, and it's like ah, I'm not really trying to hear that anymore. Like that's not that's not really my you know I, that's what I was maybe six years ago. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the stuff that Tupac was talking about that gravitated towards me because a lot of his music is still relevant. Exactly. Like, you, can, you can apply it to today's day and age. Timeless like, music. This is this is Brenda's got a baby is still a is still a, a a relevant song. What thirty almost thirty years later now? Mm -hmm. That's wild. But that just shows you that, you know, we're not trying to hear Humpty Dumpty no more. Like, <laughs> you, know, cool, you know, you got your legendary songs, but you got the songs that actually change and you can play for Yo, future, future kids. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow, this is cool. Wow, when he make this? Oh, 40 years ago? Well, why is it still what I see on TV? So, so, so let's back up a little bit. I want to ask you a question really fast. Let's back up a little bit. How did you actually get started um, in the music? How did you pick up the mic? How did you pick up the pen? You know, what was your inspiration? Um, so really, I grew up skateboarding, like I was telling you, and I broke my heel skateboarding. Um, and I literally had nothing else to do. And I literally hated reading, but I was like, writing music sounds really cool. And uh, somebody that I was going to high school with, he was like, I have a studio. He's like, come oh. through. I was like, okay, cool. Like, <laughs> cool. I'm, I'm, I'm hurt. I don't have anything else to do. Why not? Why not try it out? And I'm like, if it doesn't work, cool. It won't work. But if I succeed, then that's the most important thing. Because um, if you fail, you fail. But, you know, you won't know you failed until you try to fail. That's right. Try to succeed. So you got to make an attempt. And I made a couple of attempts. My first couple of songs sucked. It was terrible. But I enjoyed them. I was like, I like this. And then I just kept going with it. Uh, graduated college. And then uh, once I graduated college, I'm like, I'm going to take this full force. Yeah. So so who helped you to understand um, that your music actually had some type of quality sound to it? You know, for your own opinion, you said your first couple of songs suck. You know, so how did you get to the, the place where you were able to shift and say, yo, I actually like my sound. I actually like my music. This is something I want to take serious. Yeah, it actually didn't occur really until after. I graduated college or like my last year in college I was just like I was kind of making music just for fun I didn't really have any like kind of way to go I was just kind of making music here and there and, and I had some fun songs we was partying to them we had a good time uh, don't don't get it twisted we had a great time <laughs> uh, but it's like I was studying the game though like I was I was just studying I was just studying 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 and the more I studied the game I, I noticed and I always had a message in my music I was like oh, I like the that the message seems to last way longer. That's like, I have songs I made five years ago that I can still listen to and perform because the message is still relevant. Mm -hmm. um, because I can't, I can't even listen to them no more because they were just so stuck at a time, mm -hmm. which is cool. It was great for that time. I may have got some love, a lot of love at that time, but ain't nobody checking for that no more. Like, nobody, nobody, and I'm not even, my heart's not like, I can't go back and make a jerking song. Mm -hmm. We stopped jerking and <laughs> But we so, still dancing though. We still looking for music to party to. Still looking for music to dance to. And I do got some of those. They are out there. Uh, mm -hmm. We about to actually go shoot some. That's where we actually headed to shoot now. Is awesome. So, um, yeah, that's why we out here in the middle of. Uh, I don't even know where this is. So let me ask you though. So let me ask you this question: As an artist, are you an independent artist? Or are you signed to a record label at this time? Uh, I'm an independent artist. So talk Definitely. to me why why you choose to stay independent at this current time. Um, well, I, I wouldn't even say, I don't even like claiming a label or whatever the case may be, but I actually don't really like, for my learnings and going through the music industry, um, I'm less concerned about being an independent artist, more so about having my business right. Okay. Uh, because I'm like, like I said, I study a lot. So like, I see that, I see that, I see there's still, there's people still signing deals. Like mm -hmm. there's people that don't need a record label that are still signing deals. So there's a point to that. There's people that are also That's not real. signed to a record label. That, yeah, that are doing great. Um, so what I've seen is when you have your management and business right, that's when you can think about things, think how to move. Because honestly, the only the issue with signing with a record label is if you get a if you get a loan from a record label, once you pay off that loan, they still own everything after the loan for mm -hmm. like seventy five years, which is stupid. <laughs> if you go, you know, if you go to a bank and you get a loan for fifty thousand, let's say the interest rate is five percent, you pay back fifty five, but you own whatever. You that's it. You mm -hmm. own everything out. So it's like if you're signing a deal to where you pay off that loan, but you still 
or paying somebody money for the next 75 years, that's dumb. Mm -hmm. But if you, if you sign to a label and let's say you only got, you only pay them a year afterwards, that's a whole different conversation. Mm -hmm. That's a whole, that's something different. But that's you got to right. have a winner with the own and know how to structure your deals. Or if somebody presents you a deal, counter offer with a deal that you feel like to help you because it definitely, like, I guess a slight gem is like, it definitely takes a couple dollars to get to where you want to go. That's if right. Or not where you want to be. Now, so I want to ask you that question too, especially talking about a couple of dollars. As an independent artist, you have to do a lot of investment, investing. I'm yeah. sorry, into yourself. So you know, when it comes down to investing in yourself, making sure that you, like you said, you're on your way to a shoot right now. You know, you got the equipment, you got the sound, you got you know the producers. Talk to us a little bit about that experience. You know, being an independent artist, especially out on the West Coast, where typically everything is a little bit more expensive. Yes. So, uh, for the longest time, uh, I did not even like understand investing anything into myself. Like I was like, uh, I think somebody had, I was like, Hey, want to promote on SoundCloud? Like maybe five, six years ago. I was like, they, they want $25. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was like, but I would also then turn around and go buy a bottle of bomb bank for $40. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. like understanding where to play, like investing yourself. Um, but the biggest thing, uh, my boy three hours ago is in here right now. It's my brother three. He shoot all my videos back here. And then my brother Rod uh, to the left of me, DJ producer as well. Peace. We all in here. Um, but really, the biggest thing we've learned is kind of just like use what you got. Like uh, one of my best music videos, or yeah, our best music video. Yeah, that's us. It's a team thing. Um, it was when we walked down to the park and walked down to the park at mom's house, pulled out the camera and was like, hey, we're going to shoot. Just shoot, like, let me, like let's just go. We just gonna pull out the camera, aim and run around, show your energy, and then we look up, and that's one of the biggest music videos we've ever awesome. had. And, uh, Organic. Just what, yeah, just using what you got. Like, mm -hmm. like the, the more excuses you make, the further you gonna push yourself back from success. That's real. So, talk about it. Yeah. So yeah, just just cut the excuses and just do it. Like mm -hmm. it's it's so many people doing a lot, doing a lot more with a lot less. You don't need all these these magical things to, to make something come to life. Just, you just got to get out there and do it. That's I mean, right. If you don't work, try something else. Right? So I want to ask yeah. you about your sound too. You know what I mean? Cause you definitely have a different sound. Um, I listened to some of your music, you know, yesterday and I didn't really get a typical West coast vibe from it at all. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I actually appreciated that, that you didn't sound, you know, like a typical rapper, a typical hip hop artist, yeah. you know, coming out the West coast, to be honest with you. So talk to me a little bit about your sound. How did you catch your wave? Uh, okay, so um, I grew up in San Diego. Um, there was a lot. There's there's a typical sound out of San Diego. Um, I didn't feel like I could rap like that. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, that, that's not not. I try to catch a couple pockets. <laughs> All right, try something else. Um, moved to Atlanta uh, for college. Went to school in Atlanta for four years. Came awesome. Back. Um, and so I just started, you know, I just I just kind of just I I, think I do I make music differently. Like I produce on my own beats, so awesome. I think it comes comes with time just kind of understanding like okay what what you like i like the new york stuff but i'm not from new york mm -hmm. but i like the new york drum patterns um i like a lot of soul samples and stuff i love that but a lot of that's more midwestern so and then just being from san diego i'm gonna have a whole different tone and everybody in those certain regions so then you just kind of pick up on game from everybody um but yes yeah, that's right you know, they go to the dirt um, but I think just being in so many different areas and studying it and just liking so many different artists, you, you kind of just, you build on your own sound. You know, everybody, I think, sounds like somebody or something at some point. Mm -hmm. And then you just take that and you build it and you mold it and you grow it. Like, mm -hmm. uh, Uber wasn't, I think Lyft started before Uber, but Uber saw what Lyft was doing and maybe they took it and just made it better. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, nobody says when you go call it. I'm going to throw this money while they throw fish. I'm going to throw this money while they <laughs> so, so how would you say? I'ma throw this money while they throw fish. Why you got your hands out? You can't hold this. I got two phones from Atlanta and also San Diego. How would you say people are actually receiving your music, accepting you as an artist? Um, so I would say uh, it's very well. Uh, we haven't been to Atlanta in a little while for a show, but we're planning to do that with the whole Corona thing happening. But um, nah, Atlanta always accepted me as well. San Diego, um, we just threw a, uh, a listening party last year. Awesome. Um, had over uh, 300 people come in and out. I think we had uh, like 200 um, at a skate shop, so that was super cool. 
Um, the cool thing about uh, how my music is perceived back home is just it's uh, it's like oh he's from here. Like we don't have too too many people. Mm -hmm. um, we have Rob Stone. Uh, shout out Jay Spooks, Jay Davis. They had a uh, hit a couple years ago, which is fire. Uh, Mick Cannon uh, is from San Diego. Uh, Mitchy Slick. We got J O Felony. I know he's from Virginia, but he, you know what I'm saying. So we, we don't have that. too too many people, but uh, we do have some awesome people that came from from San Diego. Um, a lot of people uh, coming up. Uh, but it ain't, it ain't been too much in the hip-hop scene, and it's just like, I think that's what, we got a lot of new upcomers too, like mm -hmm. just me, myself, and a whole bunch of other people uh, really about to come up and do some damage. But we just never had that, like, somebody to really get up there and, like, really, like, really, like, shake things up, like, like a Kendrick or anything like that. I feel yet. that. Not yet. So Probably let me ask you this too, um, yeah. you know, coming from a millennial perspective, you know, would you say that San Diego, the actual city, um, has, you know, the backs of artists, the artist community? Do they support the artist community? Is it, you know, a budget for the artist community? Is it a place you can go, you know, like you can go down to Art District in L.A.? Is there a place like that in San Diego? Tune in now to Variety Radio. Tune in now to Variety Radio. What's up, what's up, what's up? This big old poet, B I G, letter O, T H E, P O E T, uh, on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. Make sure you keep yourself locked into Revive Radio.